This is the Kohen in the East. Ruch Hashem, Yahweh Eloheinu, the Melech of the whole universe. Ruch Hashem. Uh, it's a wonderful day today. And uh, I believe and I am certain that all of you are having a wonderful day in your respective countries. Now, our Pashas today is Wa'ibchana, Pashas 45 from the Torah, which is from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapters 3 to 7. Now, this is very important uh, Pasha. This is very important Torah reading in the book of Moses, fifth book of Moses. Why? Because it also has a Shema Israel, the creed, you know, the, the, the creed that some Okay, this is a test. Uh, can everybody hear me or not? All right, I'll, I'll kickstart my lecture. I started it, but I, you know, I'll restart it. Okay, no worries. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha. This is the Kohen in the East. Ruch Hashem, Yahweh Eloheinu, the Melech of the whole universe. Ruch Hashem. Uh, it's a wonderful day today. And uh, I believe and I am certain that all of you are having a wonderful day in your respective countries. Now, our Pashas today is Wa'ibchanan, Pashas 45 from the Torah, which is from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapters 3 to 7. Now, this is very important uh, Pasha. This is very important Torah reading in the book of Moses, fifth book of Moses. Why? Because it also has a Shema Israel, the creed, you know, the, the, the creed that sons of Israel, the daughters of Israel are supposed to recite perhaps daily I would say if you can, Shema Israel Yahweh Elohim Yahweh Echad this is a very important creed and of course you know that Ashkenazi they do not recite it in the same way that we do, they remove the you know Yahweh to Hashem or Adonai and that's okay that's, you know, what they follow. They follow their traditions. We follow our Torah. Torah doesn't tell us to remove names and replace them with traditional names. So we will do what we are supposed to do. Shema Israel, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Achad. Hero Israel, Yahweh our Supreme One. With the concealed knowledge, Yahweh is Echad. He is a concealer and a revealer. Hashem. Wonderful, wonderful uh, day over here. Wonderful, wonderful Shabbat. I am basically in travel mode, traveling up and down the land and visiting a few places. But it is wonderful. It is great. I want to, you know, take this opportunity to tell you that this is the time during the Pasha when God told Moses that you are not allowed to enter the land. And Moses, you know, uh, took the commandments from God, the Ten Commandments, took other commandments, gave to them the children of Israel, instructed them, told them what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. And, you know, many other things subsequently happened within this sphere. You know, Moses instructed uh, Israel which are the cities of refuge that the Levites would control, 
Moses also told Israel that how the conquest will proceed, how Israel will proceed with the conquest. And of course, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5 repeats the infamous, or I should say the famous Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments, I want to give you one, number 11, you know, commandment which is the Gimel, which is uh, uh, one of the very important commandments uh, about you shall not lift up the name of Yahweh your power in oaths falsely. Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who lifts his name and falsifies it. Very important commandment. Very, very important. Must never do that and must always uh, prevent yourself from entering such a state. As I remember last week, I told you about a woman, a Christian woman in this country who used, you know, she didn't say exactly, I swear in Yahweh's name, uh, although they use uh, Yahweh's name over here, they call him Yahweh over here in their language. But she took an oath in God's name, because, you know, when you say, I take an oath in God's name, that's it, you commit it. She took an oath in God's name and lied about her daughter's running off with another man. She became paralyzed for the rest of her life shortly thereafter because she took a false oath. This false oath, this is the worst thing you can do. You must never do it. If somebody puts you to it and asks you to take an oath, and if you know that the oath is not true, never take it. Never commit yourself to it. Just avoid it altogether. This is very important. I find that, you know, the Torah is full of instructions. It's beautiful, you know, it's got life, it's got health, it's got vigor, it's got vitality, it's got abundance. Torah has got everything within it. It's everything, you know, it's everything and everything. It's all you need. Sure, you can read the rest of the books of the Bible. Sure, you know, you can read the the new new covenant writings, the Bukhadashah, as they call it. You can read those, you can read uh, the words of Master Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, you can read his words, uh, Rabbi Yeshua's words, no problem, it's perfectly fine, There's nothing wrong with that, I'm, I'm definitely not against it. Uh, he is, you know, he has left beautiful, great teachings, he has left some great, wonderful teachings that people don't apply today. Uh, if they could only apply it, their lives would change completely. In John 14, 6, which is repeated world over by Christians, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Is totally mistaken and totally misread and totally misapplied. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you or added to you. Matthew 6, 33, again, is totally misrepresented and misapplied. When Yeshua Jesus said that I'm the way, the truth, and the life, he wasn't speaking about your eternal life. He wasn't talking about when you die, I'm going to give you a little, nice little home in heaven. He was talking about your subconscious, your conscious, your subconscious. He was talking about manifesting law, the law of manifestation that came out of the Torah, by the way. He was speaking about that law. He was speaking about the fact that he is within you and it is through him that you will access your subconscious, your kingdom, the kingdom level, and it is through that that you reach the Father. It's basically a metaphorical verse. So nothing to do with you dying and, and getting eternal life, because because let's let's face reality. There is reincarnation. You know, it's not a Hindu teaching. Reincarnation was believed by even early Christians. Early Christians believed it. But later Christians dropped it out of their foolishness and, and, you know, foolish doctrines that were introduced in the third and the fourth centuries. Those foolish doctrines were the ones that caused them to drop a lot of, lot of good teachings. But before this, the, you know, the Jews, they believed in it. They believe, they even today believe in reincarnation. So it's not like Hindus, uh, gave that reincarnation, it came out of them. The version of reincarnation in Hinduism is different from the version that comes out of the Torah. In Hinduism, reincarnation is not about uh, you just dying and coming back. It's about you can come back as a, an animal. If what works you have done, 
that God can bring you back in different forms as a cat, as a dog, as an animal. No, we do not believe in such things. We do not teach such things. I don't teach you that you're going to come back as a cat. No, you're not going to come back as a cat. When you come back, you will come back fully fleshed human being, a man or a woman, whatever that you are. That's what you're going to come back. Now, there's several other things that happen. No one speak about those. This lecture is not about reincarnation. But as I said, that you're not going to stay up there forever and ever, and there is no heaven and hell. There is no hell where you're going to be punished forever and ever. All these teachings were developed by church fathers to scare and fool people into submission and make them scared so that people will listen to church fathers. Church fathers lied too many lies, too many white lies, too many black lies. And you can read about it in history. It's all over the place. You know, it's in the life, it's in European libraries all over the place. You read about church fathers and their foolishness that they put out. However, you know, we're not here to, to, uh, uh, put a judgment on the church fathers. They did what they did, what they felt was right for the time. Now, how they felt they wanted to control the people. You today are free. You are a free man. You are a free woman. You have the law of God with you. Now it's up to you whether you choose the law of God or whether you choose the law of man. Paul, a rabbi in the first century, wrestled with that. You know, he spoke in, in parables, he spoke in different ways, and he spoke about the law of man, the law of humanity, the law of God. A lot of Paul's teachings got confused simply because Paul again was trying to appease an audience that was mixed. It was a mixed audience. Gentiles who trying to become Jews or convert into the Hebrew faith, vice versa, etc. And maybe some, some Hebrews who were too, who were too Gentile. <laughs> yeah, there is such a thing. There is such a thing that a Hebrew can be too Gentile. Excuse me. As I sit here and drink this Kool-Aid, actually it's not Kool-Aid, it's beautiful cold water that the neighbor has given me. I'm grateful for this beautiful water that the, the, the girl downstairs has, has given me in a bottle with a sham. What a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, tasty water. Uh, in this uh, hot, hot weather, it's right nice, about 91 degrees Fahrenheit over here. I think we're expecting close hundreds over here. Anyway, so moving on, as I was saying, that the teachings were mistook and misapplied. And then today, people are living like zombies. People are expecting to get their little, little shackle, you know, in heaven. And they're all going to be shackled together. And they're all going to be singing Kumbaya. <laughs> you know, it's not like that, by the way. I'm the one who's going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you that a lot of the Bible is is not translated literally. A lot of the Bible is translated mystically, and it is not what you read. It is what's underneath that you read. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. It's not about some, you know, doing 150-pound lifts with God's name, or, you know, saying that uh, as I do my 500-pound lifts, you know, I'm going to say I love God or it's not about uh, spending all your money on God and saying that I'm going to sell my house and sell my car and I'm going to become a pauper. I'm going to go and live in some monastery. It's not about that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart is a euphemism. It's a command that says use your imagination. Use the God-given imagination. Your heart is a euphemism for imagination. Love the Lord your God with your, all your all your heart, meaning that you use your imagination to receive God, to receive the goodness of God in your life. That's how you receive it, with all your soul, with all your mind. You combine the three together. These are the important areas of chakras. The Indian system calls it chakras. We call it centers. And these are the important centers that we the manifestations take place in your heart, in your solar plexus, 
There's another brain in your solar plexus, by the way. Doctors have proved that. Uh, and uh, also there is, of course, your cranial, you know, your, your brain in your head. So seek first the kingdom that Yeshua spoke about. It wasn't some imaginary, you know, I'm going to get my little mention up there, you know, <laughs> hanging on the strings. It wasn't about that. It is about you receiving your manifestations right here and benefiting yourself, your families, your loved ones. You know, he said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. It, that doesn't mean that, oh, I go out and give leaflets. I, you know, I go out and put out leaflets. Jesus loves you and he's, he wants to save you and you must repent and you're a sinner. Total, total BS. It's not about that. It is not about that. At any point in given time of history. And he said that, let your light shine before others. When you manifest your desires, when you do the right thing, when you're manifesting beautiful things and your family is happy, your family has food to eat on their table, car to drive, money in the bank. What do you think the neighbors are going to be saying? What do you think they're going to say? See that family over there? They're extremely blessed. Wow, those guys are really blessed. They have plenty of food to eat. They have nice car to drive. They have a nice home to live in. They're going to, they're going to, you're going to be glorifying your father. Glorifying your father in heaven where? Where is heaven? Heaven is within. So you glorify your father within. When you sit down to do your meditation, you glorify your father within because that is the father that gives you the manifestation, gives you, manifest for me, for you what you desire. That is what this commandment is talking about. It is not talking about putting out leaflets in people's doors and knocking on doors and telling them that you're a sinner so they can slap you in your face and say, get the hell out of here, you stupid Christian. You know, you're telling me that I'm a sinner. No, I'm not a sinner. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen this, you know, like a funny scene. <laughs> if you ever go to in uh, uh, Stanford in London, you know, or you go to uh, maybe uh, Golders Green in London, where Jews live, or maybe you go to New York, you know, where the Jews, a lot of the Jews live. You go up there, you try to give a, a Christian leaflet, you're going to get a kick in your ass. They're going to kick you in your ass and get the heck out of here, you stupid little Christian. They're going to tell you that. They're going to, they're, they're very, they're, they're very rude over there. They're, they're not, you know, they're not going to tell you politely. They're going to tell you harshly. So stop this nonsense, you know, and stop following this nonsense. It is true. Stop following this nonsense. We're not supposed to do that. It's not what you're supposed to do. There's no commandment that says that you have to go and put leaflets in people's homes and tell them that they are sinners. Sin, sin is missing the mark. Missing the mark is simply, I will, I will tell you that it's the limitation of your thinking process, a limitation of your production. It's a limitation of what you produce in life. It's a limitation. If you don't produce in life, if you don't manifest, you don't know how to maybe, you don't know the way, then it's a limitation. That's all what sin is. Sin is not making you some evil, carnival, you know, Batman joker <laughs> that Batman is chasing. You know, all these movies that we see, and then they make these roles, you know, they make a role of an evil man and a, and a, and a hero. You are the hero always. You are the one in control. You are the director of your life. There goes my alarm. <laughs> or whisper. Imagination. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so, as I was telling you, as I was telling you that it is, you are the director of your life. You create your own economy. I was speaking to somebody yesterday and I'm telling them how to do it. I was telling them, don't think to yourself, oh, Corona, and then the shops are closed, and this, that, and this, what am I going to do? And, you know, I'm, am I going to go for a $100 salary, $200 salary? I said, no, you create your economy. You write down what salary you want. I said, if you want a salary in this country of, say, for argument's sake, $2,000 a month, which is a, well, not $2,000, $2,800, let's say $3,000 a month. $3,000 a month salary is a decent salary in this country. And I said, if you want a $3,000 salary, then that's what you write. You write for yourself a $3,000 salary. It's a definitely doable. It is achievable. 
and you will get it because you produce it out of a business. You're not going to go slave for somebody and produce that salary over here because nobody wants to pay you $3,000 a month here. And I'm talking about this country. I'm not talking about America. Let's talk about America. Let's talk about England. In America, nobody wants to pay you $10,000 uh, a month unless you are a PhD, you're a really good engineer, uh, maybe you're a doctor, you can get more than that, then yes, then they will pay you. They're not going to pay you $10,000 a month to flip burgers. Let's just be honest about that, okay? McDonald's not going to pay you $10,000 a month to flip burgers. England, cab drivers are not going to earn $10,000 a week to drop passengers in their Uber taxis or in their normal taxis. They're not going to earn that. So where do you earn such income? Where do you earn income that is maybe fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000 a month, you know? Half a million dollars a year, you know, a million dollars a year. A million dollars a year, uh, give and take, is about eighty-eight thousand uh, dollars a month. So eighty-eight thousand dollars a month for for your perspective, uh, uh, Britishers, the England people, is about fifty to sixty thousand pounds, give and take. Okay, I'm giving you approximate, not giving you approximate, just giving you rough estimates. Fifty to sixty, let's just say fifty thousand pounds a month income. Who is going to pay you fifty thousand pounds income a month? Well, unless you're, you know, unless you're a top-notch lawyer in England or America, and yes, then you can earn that money. If you're a top-notch lawyer, you know, doing cases, maybe you're doing corporate cases, maybe you're doing uh, criminal law and other things, then maybe you can. Maybe you're a top surgeon, then yes, you can earn that. Everybody's not a surgeon. Everybody's not a top lawyer. You create your economy. You want 50,000 pounds? You create it. You write it. You manifest it. You have your business that will do that. Yes, I know people in this country, and I was shocked when I, when I look at their, their cars, when I look at their homes, and I'm like, wow, you know, we sit over there in our little cozy little greenhouses, you know, in America. <laughs> we sit in our little, you know, wooden greenhouses, and we think to ourselves, oh, you know, Poor little Pakistan, poor little India, you know, poor people over there, they don't have enough money to eat. And when I come over here and I look at their homes and I look at, you know, their cars that they drive, my goodness, $100,000 cars. You know, people in America can't afford those cars, $100,000 plus cars. A land cruiser in this country, let me tell you something, a land cruiser in this country costs you to put over here. Obviously, it's not going to be this much in America because you have to pay taxes over here. A land cruiser here costs over a hundred thousand dollars to bring in on the road. Seriously, a land cruiser. <laughs> you might buy a land cruiser in America for sixty thousand dollars, but you got to pay sixty thousand dollars tax duties on it over here and in India. So, if you're driving that car in India, if you're driving a land cruiser, you're a rich man. Yeah, because you paid hundred and twenty or thousand dollars to bring it in. And that's just a Land Cruiser. And I've seen cars better than Land Cruisers over here. I saw I, I saw a, a, a Mercedes, uh, which was a, a 5 Series Mercedes I saw yesterday on the road. It's like, wow, what a beautiful car. And, you know, somebody was driving it over here. I've seen houses over here, beautiful big houses. And they're like half a million dollar homes. Half a million dollar homes. Think about it. Oh, poor Pakistan, poor India. No, po po not poor Pakistan, poor India. My goodness, they are telling you so many lies over there in America and England. They're keeping you from the truth. Like, you know, the same with China. You know, there are so many rich people in China and they keep you from the truth and they hide this from you and they make the Chinese all this evil, you know, jo you know like that joker in Batman. You know, they make Chinese evil. The Chinese are the evil people and America is the good people and they make it sound like it's the good people against the evil people. It's nothing like that. It's not even remotely true. It is, you know, the first time I went to China and I saw these people, they're so humble people, so wonderful people. You know, I left, I left, I think it was a t-shirt or a, not even a t-shirt, I left a shaving can. I left a shaving can in my room and I changed rooms in the hotel. And the, and the woman came upstairs to me in a different room and said to me, sir, you left your shaving can in the room. And she brought it to me. Think about that. That was in China. And yet, you know, the media will tell you that the Chinese are communists and they are evil people. Okay? That's the picture they paint. This is why I told you 
Stop listening to the media. Cut out the media and you will have wonderful lives. You will manifest wonderfully. Do not put garbage in your brains. You know, I have stopped listening to the media. It's been over a week now. This is the second week, second Shabbat, <clears throat> that I have not. You know, I remember, remember I told you that I removed all the apps from my telephone, all media apps, you know, that I had, Al Jazeera News. Uh, then there was some uh, Associated Press. Then there was some Stock Market News. I removed all of it, boom, everything. I deleted all of it, don't want any of it. BBC, all that, but only, you know, removed all of that. And including CNN and everything, yeah, Sky News, all the balonies were gone, Fox News, everything. Removed everything. I don't want to hear it from any of them. And, and since then, two weeks, honestly, I'm telling you that my manifesting has accelerated. <laughs> it's accelerated like I don't get all this garbage coming in. You know, I only look at those videos that are inspirational, that are uplifting, that, you know, building. And I don't touch the news because I don't want to hear this crap all the time about, oh, this person shot this person and that bus flipped over there and, you know, a plane crashed. I don't want to hear that baloney. I'm not interested in that. And neither should you be interested in that either. Cut out the news. Cut out the BS from the media. The media is what's trying to shape you. Listen, I'm telling you the truth. The reason why America and Europe has a high divorce rate is not because people are evil and people are bad. It's because this is what the media teaches you. The media teaches you this, keeps giving you this affirmation that your marriages are failing. It keeps giving you this, that your marriages are failing. And you keep listening to it. And you, you keep repeating it like an affirmation. Guess what's going to happen to your family? A husband fighting wife, a wife fighting husband. Marriage breakdown. Europe has a high rate of divorce. This is the reason why. It's all created by the media. It's media hype. If, you know, I know families in England. You know, I know families in England that have been married for 50 years. You know, I have met some couples over there in England and in America. And in America as well. Couples have been married for 50 years. I, I think there was one couple that I heard about in England, that I read about, that was married for 70 years. Like, good. I was like, wow, what a marriage. So, there are couples like this, both in, in the US, North America, in England, and other European countries. They've been married for a long, long time. But they don't follow the, the BS from the media. They don't listen to the media. They don't go about, you know, uh, affirming to themselves that their marriage is broke down. Don't listen to it, because it creates a nasty, nasty, uh, manifestations in your life. It destroys your marriages. It destroys your families. Please do not listen to the media. Do not follow it. You want to follow media? Look at the nice side of it. Look at who's, who's becoming the next billionaire. Look at who's becoming the millionaire. Look at who's putting a spaceship in, in, you know, in, in space. Or maybe look at who's doing the research for the next best, uh, you know, electric vehicle. You know, things like that. Look at good things. Look at technology. Look at things that are changing our world. Look at the things that are benefiting our people. You know, maybe new technology that, you know, heart, heart surgery, heart transplant, other things. You know, if you're interested in those kind of things, sure. You know, me, I'm not interested in that so much. My interest is more to do with finances, you know, more to do with life and more to do with health and more to do with people. You know, I'm a people's person. You know, I love people and I, you know, do, you know, follow that through. People can't get enough of me over here. You know, they want me to help them in their businesses. They want them to be direct them in how to do their businesses. They want me to direct them in how to, how to bless their homes. You know, I, my work is cut out over here. So much work. And there are many cities I haven't traveled to yet. And, you know, there are people over there that tell me that if you come over here, you're going to have to stay here with us for a while. You can't leave the city. You can't live here for a few months, you know, so <laughs> my book is cut out, I'm telling you, you know, it's Karachi, right, it's a portal city, I haven't gone there yet, Islamabad is a capital, I haven't gone there either yet, and both of those places, I have people that I know, and they told me, they said, when you come over here, you're not leaving over here till we tell you to go, <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm like, okay, you know, I will go and I'm ready to go, I'm not ready to go yet. And there are business people over there. There are business people over there that want me to help them in their businesses. 
You know, and there's a, a, a woman from Australia in one of the coastal cities, and she told me that she has properties in Australia. And she told me that, you know, I, I directed her to uh, businesses over here, and she's doing it. She's already doing it. She's making money. I'm telling you. You know, it's like boom, boom, boom. Money came for her. For She got $100,000 from Australia. I'm talking about U.S. dollars, not Australian dollars. She got a hundred thousand U.S. dollars from Australia, and she invested it in three houses, or three beautiful houses on my instructions. And now she's, and now this month will be the first month she'll start receiving rent from those properties. Then she was asking me, what else can I do? She said, I have, I have properties in Australia that I want to sell, and I want to bring the money over. And I, I can you please help me, direct me in what I should do? And I told, I told her what to do. I gave her a name of what she, what business, a name for the business, and then I told her, you know, how to go about conducting it. I told her, create your economy, exactly what I'm telling you, create your own economy. How much money do you want to earn a month? Tell yourself, write it for yourself. How much money do you want to earn a month? You got to write it. I'm not going to write it for you. I can only tell you. So she's doing that, and she's doing exactly that. And so she told me, she said, look, you know, the project that you're telling me is a big project for me. And you, if we, you're going to have to come and handle it for me over here. And then you might have to stay over here one year. And I was like, well, you know, right now <laughs> I'm kind of, you know, finding it hard to travel between places because everybody wants my attention. They want me to help them uh, conduct their businesses and help them uplift their businesses, bless their homes. So I said that. Uh, you know, you're going to have to give me a little bit time. Uh, maybe not now, maybe not July, maybe not August, maybe September. Maybe September I will come over and then, you know, we will discuss your business plans and how best to put them into effect. So, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm setting up appointments with people, you know, when to go there. I, I think that next month, August, I am meant to be in the capital. I got an appointment there. I got an appointment in, in uh, the coastal city of Karachi in uh, September. And so uh, we'll see what happens. You know, uh, we're talking about big money over here. We're talking about small, we're not talking about small dollar. This is not about five ten. This is not about five ten thousand dollar money. This is talking about big dollar money, half a million dollars, million dollars investment. These people want to invest money and they want to benefit of the investment and they want to do it with a future vision. Like, you know, they want to invest thinking that, they will benefit in 10 years' time, in a decade, from that business, continuously benefit. So, you know, I come up with ideas for them, what business they can put into play. And because they have connections to the outside world, because they might be connected to the U.S., uh, perhaps to England, maybe to uh, Australia. You know, Australia is a nice place. And uh, then, sure, you know, they can invest in a business and use those countries to maybe do some kind of import of stuff that they are trying to set up and set up some kind of import cycle and they can import stuff and they can sell their stuff away. It's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a legitimate business. People over here want foreign goods. People have the money to buy foreign goods. And this is the, this is the thing. So remember what I said, create your own economy. Don't worry about what CNN tells you. Don't worry about Fox News and uh, let them, you know, continue their nonsense. But you want to create your own economy. Whatever you create, you will make. You create your own economy. You decide how much money you want to make every month. You can then work on it. Let me give you a very simple, very easy, easy way to uh, bring things to manifestation. Now, last Shabbat and maybe last two Shabbats, I spoke about writing a letter. And within that letter, you speak about the things that you have received and how you're benefiting. That was one very powerful method in which you're incorporating your affirmations and you're actually saying that they've already come true. They're already here. And you're benefiting off of them and you're being grateful and you're writing a little story about how your family behaved, you know, what they did and what they said and what they didn't say. And then also, you know, remember, you are the director. You are the Hollywood director over here. You are writing your story. Now, how do you do this part? Very easy. 
This is another very powerful technique. I, I, I have a water bottle over here. I did it with my water bottle. I speak my affirmations into the water bottle. Okay? So, what do we speak? Let's say that you want to create, let's say you want to create a hundred thousand dollars. Okay? And that's a small amount, by the way. Don't consider that a big amount. Uh, you know, if you, if you said to me a hundred million dollars, yeah, that's reasonably big. Fifty million dollars, reasonably big. Uh, but, but they are all doable. So what you do, you, you take your water, take a, make a, take a glass. It's what you're supposed to do. It's what you should do. Get a glass. Now, generally speaking, the glass can be metal, stainless steel, maybe plastic even, but don't do that. Don't get plastic. Don't get cheapy, cheapy, you know. Don't always go out for cheapy stuff, you know. Be a little bright, you know, be a little bit, a little, little, little bit uh, affluent, you know. Get a nice crystal glass. You know, they're, they're not that expensive. You can buy it from your local stores. You know, Walmart sells nice glasses. You can get a set of six glasses there. Or maybe you can buy it from Tesco's in, in England, Sainsbury's, Tesco's. Morrison's, you know, all these people sell glasses, and they are pretty inexpensive, you know, crystal glasses. Walmart, you know, Target, uh, and other places in America, they do it as well. You can even get it online from Amazon. So if you're, you know, if you haven't got time to go, then Amazon is your next, you know, next stop. So you get a, a, a get a crystal glass. Now, I would encourage you to write it with your hand. Don't print it. Write it with your hand. And write on it a number of affirmations. For example, your affirmation could be that I am a multi-millionaire. I am a stock market millionaire. I am great. I am in healthy mind and healthy body. I'm in continuous perfect health. I am continuously wealthy. You know, so you write those number of affirmations one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like, you know, you write it with your, with your own fingers, with your own pen. And what you do, uh, one of the things that you might find with glasses is when you have to wash them, they then obviously, you know, this paper might come off. So I would suggest that this was something that one of my students was telling me that it steamed up and it was falling off the paper. So, and yes, that can happen. My suggestion is, is, uh, do what she did. She's going to do the lamination. You do the lamination on that. Get it laminated. Some of you might even have the laminated machine in the house. I mean, you can buy those machines in Walmart for, I don't know, 30 bucks or something. So uh, you laminate it yourself. You laminate those writings and you put them on the inside of the glass, meaning not inside inside the glass. They are on the outside of the glass. But when you look at the glass, they will show you coming in from the outside, meaning that the writing is facing inward to the glass. Now, when you pour water into that glass, you drink that, you're taking the effects of what you have written. But I want you to do a little bit more. Now, do this as an experiment for me, and then you can report back to me how the experiment went. I want you to speak 22 times. Take an affirmation. Now, let me see. Uh, let me see over here because I have my notepad over here and I'm, I'm doing a little test run as well. And my test run is that I do this 22 times and I was looking at this last night and, uh, my test run is that there is a house, there is a house in a particular part of the city, not a house, there are several houses over there, but there is a particular part of the city, I want to buy a house over there. So what I do, is I speak exactly that word into that glass 22 times. Okay? And you can do the same. It doesn't have to be for a house. It can be for a car. It can be for a house. It can be for a sum of money because money can be used to purchase a house. You know, a number of things. For me, I need an amount of about, uh, let me see, I'm going to have to calculate it over here. Give me a moment. Because we'll do this as an experiment live, you know, so that I can report back to you and tell you what the result is. Because I've just started it uh, yesterday, I believe. And now, let me see. Uh, let me just calculate that uh, about, okay, we'll, we'll give and take. 
I'll say it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars house, okay, give and take. Uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but it's within that range. It's a it's a it's a house that is about. Uh, let me tell you the square foot of the house. It's a twenty five hundred square foot house, roughly, roughly. Or sorry, not twenty five, twenty four hundred. It's about two thousand four hundred square foot house. The problem that I'm having over here is that my house doesn't have a big enough garage to hold my car. I have two cars now, and I can't put both of the cars in the garage. So, nice problem to have, right? It's a very nice problem to have. You have two cars, but you can't fit them in your garage. So one has to park outside. So I said to them, I said to the wife, I said, we need a bigger, we need a bigger driveway or a bigger garage. So I said, well, I know the perfect place where they have these houses with bigger garages. And that's the house I'm talking about. So I am gunning for that. I am, man, I'm going to manifest that house in that area. And the house is around about $150,000. So I have to manifest $150,000 to purchase that house. You know, give and take. You know, minus $5,000 here and there. So what do I do? This is what I will do. I will hold the glass of water. Whatever I've written on the glass remains there. I will take the, the glass of water. I will fill it with water. And I will say, you know, giving you a rough example. You can do it in a similar way. And I will say, I have received hundred and fifty thousand dollars I have received hundred and fifty thousand dollars I have received hundred and fifty thousand dollars because that's the amount that I need to purchase the house right so instead of saying I purchased the house I could say that I could say purchase the house in such and such location it becomes a little long-winded I don't want to make it long-winded I'll make it simple everything can be done with money Everything. You want to buy a car, you, you get money to do it. You want to buy a house, you do it with money. You want to buy clothes, you do it with money. So money is what takes care of everything. So I just speak about the amount of money I need. Received $150,000. Received $150,000 22 times. So you take an amount of money and you speak it 22 times into the water glass. After that, when you've done 22 times, you sip that water slowly don't gulp it, don't do that, <laughs> it's not good for health. You sip it slowly and, you know, while you're sitting down, maybe, you know, you're having, your, I don't know, maybe having dinner, lunch, something, or maybe you're not having lunch, maybe just sitting down, relaxing, and you sip that water and you finish that glass daily, daily for 22 days. 22 days, 22 is the number of the Hebrew alphabet. You do it 22 days then I want you to take eight days off. Eight days off. And then start over. Okay? So let me repeat that again. You're going to take a glass of water. You're going to put water in that glass. Preferably a crystal glass. I mean, you can use some other form of glass as well, but preferably a crystal glass is better because it conducts energy better. You speak into that water 22 times every day, one time. One time every day you speak into it 22 times whatever desire you have that you want fulfilled. Okay, whatever desire. Whether that is $150,000, whether that is $20 million, whether that is $100 million, whatever. It doesn't matter. It will come very quickly. The way you do it, you you after you say the 22 times, one time a day, you're going to drink that water slowly, sip by sip. Then after that, you relax, you do it for 22 days, one time daily. After that, you allow yourself to have a rest of eight days. You do not drink water for eight days. It doesn't have to be from the first of the month to 22. It could be any time. You could start it today. You know, if you start it today... Uh, the date today would be 24th, for example, the Shabbat, 24th Sabbath date. You start it today and you then count 22 days from today. And then at 22 days count, you stop and you take eight days rest. You assess the situation after that eight days rest. Did that desire manifest? Is the answer yes or no? 
If the answer is yes, of course, you already met the desire, you don't need to do anything further. If the answer is no, you repeat it another 22 days until this desire comes in. Now, on top of that, on top of that, your mental diet, your mental talk that you do every day should be of the desire itself being fulfilled, meaning you're living in the end. How do you live in the end? You do that by telling yourself in your mind that you have received it, whatever it is that you're waiting for. In my case, if it's $150,000, what if it's the house, I would be telling myself, I have received the house. I've moved into the house. Okay? So in my case, it would be simply be that, let's just put it simply. I would say, I've moved into the house. That's my desire fulfilled. I'm living there. Or I'll just say, I'm living there. I'm living in that house. Whatever the, I don't need to put an exact address because I don't know the exact address, what number is going to be. So I simply will use a town. You know, I won't use a, I won't use a city. I will use a part of the town as reference. So to give you an idea, uh, for instance, where you live, you have different parts of the city. Uh, like in, for instance, in Ohio, you know, uh, in, uh, for instance, Fremont, there'll be different parts of Fremont. There'll be the north side of Fremont. There'll be the south side. There'll be the eastern side. There'll be the western side. Same in Indiana. Same in Florida. Doesn't matter wherever you are. Same in London. You know, in London, you, you might have the south side of town, the north side of town. Uh, you know, you might say, uh, north side of, side of town might be, you know, places like I don't know, places like, you know, example, Golders Green, maybe, uh, south side of town, maybe other places, uh, you know, going uh, westwards to London, you know, whatever those places are, you use those places' names because you want to acquire a house there, you want to live there. So, in, for, for example, if you want to live in Harrow in London, and you'll say, I'm living in Harrow, you know, I, I've got my house fully paid. So your mental talk will be, my house is fully paid in hell. That's it. That's your mental talk. No more than that. It's simple. It's very simple. Fully paid. We do the fully paid because we're not interested in renting it. You know, you could rent it. You could rent a house anywhere uh, with your salary or whatever, your income. But you're not interested in renting it. You're interested in paying for it completely. You don't want to be a, a slave to a bank for the next 30 years of your life. So, so to come back to my example, I know the part of the city where the house is. I'm simply going to use that part of the city as a reference point for myself and say I'm living in that part of the city. When I built my house, where I wanted to build my house, I... You know, didn't specify country. I didn't specify city. I only specified the area of town where I wanted the house. And today the house is there. Okay? It's already achieved. Same way, I'm going to do the same thing now, second time. I know where the houses are. You know, I don't know which house is for sale over there. Maybe, maybe there's 10 houses for sale over there. And maybe they all vary in prices. So all I'm going to say is, you know, such and such part of town, I have my house fully paid. And I'm going to continue to repeat that. I'm going to continue to repeat it. I am living in, let's make a fictitious name. Let's call it Hollywood. I'm living in Hollywood in a nice home fully paid. Okay? I'm living in Hollywood in a nice home fully paid. That's my mantra. That's my repetition. That's what I keep telling myself in my mind. I keep telling myself, until I cement the reality that, you know, from no house, there is a house. And from not living there, I am living there. Living there doesn't mean I have to be there, you know, tied to a, you know, like a chain. <laughs> living there doesn't mean that. Living there simply means the place is available for me. I can come and go there as I please. That's what living means. So, again, uh, some of you may uh, derive a wrong meaning of living there, living there doesn't mean I have to be tied to the house 365 days a year. 
I mean, I could be in America for a few months. I could be in England for another few months. I could be somewhere else. Living there simply means that I have access to the house. It's mine, and I can come and go as I please. That's what living there means. That's what you're telling yourself. Now, I want to make something very, very important to you. This is where some of you fail. You know why you fail? It's not because you're not doing the method. Well, some of you don't even bother to do the method. That's, of course, the, you know, early sign of failure is when you don't, don't do the method. But those of you who do the method, the reason why you fail is because you give up, because you allow negativity, you know, because your mind also generates negative thoughts. Your mind generates both positive and negative thoughts. This is the reason why I said do not watch the news because a lot more negative news comes out because it sells. Look, negativity sells. They make money on it. Tabloids sell, you know, in, in, in any country, tabloids sell because of sensationalism. And so sensationalism is created by fake news mostly. Mostly it's fake news. is not always true. And, and that's where the fake news term was popularized by the, the you know, previous president of the U.S., Mr. Mr. Trump. He called fake news from CNN and from other outlets. Why? Because, you know, some of the news items were not true and they were being popularized, sensationalized. And so fake news became a term that now almost everybody uses. But I, I think that maybe I might be wrong. But I think I first heard of the term from Mr. Trump the late president or the previous president saying that fake news. So fake news, now, <laughs> the news that we are making, okay, listen to this, it's kind of, kind of funny. The news that we are making might sound like fake news. If you told your brother and sister you have a house in Hollywood and they might laugh at you and say, you crazy, you don't live in Hollywood, you live over here. That's fake news, right? But your fake news is going to be real news. Why? Because you're cementing it, faking it till you're making it. You're cementing the reality in within your kingdom that that is the fact. Now, I'm going to come back to why you fail. Some of you who fail, why you fail is because you allow other inputs into your life. For instance, you know, you might be looking at things that are so negative that are impacting your brain impacting your body and they are creating a negativity in your you know in your circle in your aura your body aura you know your body aura is about a a, a, a hand wide when i say hand sorry uh, an arm length wide your body aura all around you it's about an arm length but some of your body auras might be like you know, over there on the other side of the planet you might be in africa somewhere so you know australia maybe so my point is that bring your body aura in, you know, in your meditations. And also, the, the, le the less you receive or listen to negative news of any type, it doesn't have to be uh, news outlets. It could be other things as well. You know, stop listening to news. Oh, aliens are coming down and, you know, their spaceships have been seen in, in Colorado and things like that. This is, all, this is all what I call, you know, distraction. This is all distraction news. Oh, planet X is going to collide with planet Y. Who cares? Who cares about planet X and planet Y? You are interested in, in manufacturing your desire. You are interested in, in impregnating your desire and bringing it forward. You don't care about planet X colliding with planet Y. And so therefore, this is why I say that avoid distractions. Oh, a red moon was seen over, you know, Hocus Pocus Mountain and the world's going to end. Stop following rubbish news like that. That is distraction. That is what's holding you back. That is what you listen to and you allow your projected goal. You know, you have a goal. You have a desire. And you're focused on it. And suddenly you hear about Hocus Pocus Mountain having red moon over it. And you <laughs> for you now is like, oh, when, does the, when is the world going to end? You know, I need to know. What the hell, you know, what the heck, who cares when the world's going to end? You're talking about your desire. You need to keep your focus straight. You know, you, you want to keep your focus straight on, dead on. You're like, you know, exocet missile. 
You know, you're, you're, you're like that, that hellfire missile. You're, you're, you're on your targets. You're going to strike targets, but don't allow your, your, uh, distraction to take you away from the target. That's why I'm telling you, you mustn't do that. The other reason why people fail when they don't make their desire and they fail is, you know why? Because we take responsibility. We take responsibility for our successes. You know, we are, we are, uh, we are enthusiastic about it. We, you know, diligently do our meditation every day. We do our uh, affirmations. We do our water, water glass ritual. And we do other things like maybe we count beads 108 times as well. So we do all of that diligently. We're very happy to do that. Okay. So we take responsibility for our successes. Now, the other side of success, by the way, is failures. The other side of health is sickness, disorder, you know, things like that. You have given yourself the freedom to use your God-given power. You have used your freedom, your God-given power for your successes. You said, I take ownership of my success and that's what I'm going to do. That's it. You do not use your God-given power for failures. You see, Sometimes the problem might be that you using your God-given power to accept failures. When you accept failures, where are you? This is a question. Where are you? Isn't that what God asked Adam? Go look in the Bible what God asked Adam. Adam, where are you? Adam's all over the place. So there's a metaphorical question. God knew where Adam was in the garden. Why is God asking Adam, where are you? Meaning that he was all over the place. So therefore, you do not, you do not want to take responsibility and acceptance of saying that you are a failure. Never ever do that. Always take responsibility and, 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 you know, accreditation for your successes. You need to tell yourself you're successful. You're a successful person. You're a successful man. You're a successful woman. But you do not keep repeating to yourself that you're a failure. So therefore, failure should never be a question. But yes, it might, you know, it might be a question. It might be because maybe in your mind, somewhere in, in the blank of your mind, somewhere in your gray matter, you know, you might be thinking, what if? You see, this what if question is what you want to avoid. You don't want to ask that what if. There's no what ifs. There's only focus of that hellfire missile or that exocet missile going to strike the target and destroy it. Meaning, you're going to manifest your desire, period. You're only geared for success. Nothing else. You're never even going to think about failure. Now, and if the success doesn't show up immediately, you don't stop. You don't say, oh, I think I have failed. <laughs> you don't do that. You know, like Bugs Bunny. <laughs> you don't do that. Oh, I think I've failed. And try again. So, no, you continue to go on the road to success. Continue to success. Continue to success. There was a, there's a woman that I spoke to yesterday and I told her she wants to come to the USA. Okay. I think it's been two years now that she's been trying. And to be honest with you, she probably hasn't got from A to B. You know, I don't want to use any negative words for her. And I don't want to judge her either. But of course, her, you know, methods, whatever method she's adopted, uh, whatever she's doing, it has not yet brought fru- forth fruit. Uh, she's still trying. Yesterday, I uh I sent her a message and I said to her, uh, how far you got to with your successes? And she's like, well, you know, I'm still working on it. It's okay. I said, look, it is not as hard as you think. It's not hard. Don't think to yourself, oh, it's, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to climb Mount Everest and it's very difficult. I have to have the right gear, right training. I have to be trained for years before I get there. Then I can climb the mountain tops. It's not like that. Coming to the U.S., 
is not climbing Mount Everest. You know, Mexicans are doing it all the time, j- jumping over walls over there. You know, <laughs> they're jumping over walls and they're going under the wall. So Mexicans are very good at that. My point is this, right? It's actually easy. I explained to her, it's very simple. All you have to do is use your mental diet. And all you're going to hear in your mind, you're just going to hear these words, welcome to the USA. That's the only words you're going to hear. And I said, you will come to the USA. Just keep repeating these words in your mind's mind's eye, in your mind, inside your brain. Welcome to the USA. That's it. I said, that's all you need. You don't need to do any other visualization techniques. You don't need to spend hours and hours, you know, reciting something. You don't need to write for millions more times before it happens. No. Just repeat one word. Welcome to the USA. And you will be in the USA. I gave her that instruction just yesterday. Why? Because I see that she's still struggling. She's struggling to manufacture a visa into the USA. Now, if she follows what I, th- what I told her yesterday, I can guarantee this, that she will be in the U.S. It doesn't matter whether she gets a job, whether somebody brings her over for business, whether she comes over, you know, gets a, a, I don't know, one of those, you know, uh, green card lotteries, whatever. It doesn't matter what. We don't care the what. We don't care the how. I know that if she allowed her mind to work properly, she can be in the U.S. Because what words do you hear? Those of you who never traveled out of the U.S., you probably don't even know. You don't have a clue, you know, what words you hear. But here is what you hear. When you travel out of the U.S., or when you come into the U.S., and British people who come over here all the time, you know, for holidays into the U.S., North America, they'll tell you the first words they hear, welcome to the U.S. It's the first words they hear because the immigration officers that are sitting there, they, they say those words too. I've heard them many, many times over. And every time I go back to the U.S. Uh, from abroad, they say, welcome to the, well, welcome to the U.S. And sometimes they might even say, welcome home. You know, because if you're a resident, you live over here, uh, you have a nationality, green card, etc. They'll say welcome home. Mostly they'll say welcome to the U.S. And you can see billboards over there that say welcome to the U.S. So those are the only words you need for entry. Please don't go and tell the Mexicans that, okay? <laughs> don't go tell the Mexicans. Otherwise, we're going to be flooded with Mexicans. But by the way, you know, the more they come, the more, you know, builders and, and you know, <laughs> painters and decorators and and you know, plumbers, great, thumbs up, you know, let them in. <laughs> you can tell them the secret. Welcome to the U.S. That's all you need. Sometimes manifesting is made difficult because you are doing it the wrong way, long-winded way, long-winded. It's not long-winded. It's sometimes very simple. So very simple. We make it harder by doing it long-winded. So keep it simple. Keep it nice and simple. You know, imagination is great. You use your imagination daily. Be faithful. Be loyal to your desire. Be loyal to it. Feel it. You know, you have the five senses. Use those where possible. And where you find that things seem to be like, you know, jerky, then just continue to repeat those words I told you. Continue to repeat those words and you will get what you desire. It will manifest quicker than quick. Now, somebody asked me a question and I think it's relevant for me to explain this over here. One of my students asked me a question. Is it easier for me to manufacture, you know, manifest a hundred million dollars or is it easy to manifest maybe a million dollars? You know, what is easier? What, what takes more time? I told him, I said, look, you can manifest a hundred million versus one million, same amount of time. Both are the same. Neither is difficult. It's up to you where you want to stand and what economy you create for yourself. It's that simple. Here also, I won't give you a tip on, um, on your health. You know, some people pop a lot of pills because they don't get enough. You know, enough uh, zinc and maybe enough ions in food, calcium, things like that. One way to help yourself 
is I'm going to give you a little recipe here and a little technique that will help you to boost your immunity. It will help you to be at optimum health and also it will produce anti-aging and anti-wrinkles. And it will, uh, you know, it will bring your age down about 15 to 20 years. If you stick to this regimen, you'll be 15 to 20 years younger than everybody else out there who is, you know, on all chemical foods and things like that. So the way you do it, uh, it's very easy. It's not that difficult. And I'll tell you the, the benefits. What you do is you go and get oxtail from your local store, butcher, etc., wherever you want to source it. Get oxtail. You can make it out of oxtail. You can make it out of sheep feet. You can even make it out of chicken. But the best one, number one list, the number one listed is uh, oxtail. Now, if you take oxtail, you've got a lot of bones over there. And the bones have phosphorus. They have calcium, 48%. Uh, they have magnesium, 1.3%, selenium, copper, manganese, boron, iron, 0.9%, silicon, 1.2%, zinc, and of course, you know, phosphorus, 37%. And those items you take, and you're going to make a broth out of that, and uh, you're going to, the way you're going to make the broth, plus also, don't forget, the, the bones also have vitamin E, they have vitamin D3, plus they have K2. They have a lot of vitamins. And uh, these, you know, the benefit of drinking this, you know, eating this stuff every day, and I'll, and I'll tell you how to eat it, it will give you good sleep, it will be lower blood pressure, it will be a great neurotransmitter. You need that in your manifestations. Gut support, you know, your stomach support, joint support. You know, those of you that are aging, it will really help your joints. It's best for bone healing if you have fractures and things like that. Really, really good. And so this is a formula that I acquired from a doctor over here. And this is really good. The way you make it is you take about three pounds of oxtail or beef bone general. Uh, you can make it out of oxtail or, or general beef bone, you know, just as long as there's a lot of bones there. You need about seven and a half liters of water. You need about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, two large spoons. And, uh, and what you do is you put that onto the bones. You let it sit there for about 30 minutes. So you can soak out the, you know, the good stuff out of the bones, out of the beef. You add two pieces of cut ginger, uh, just two round slices. You put one large onion in it. Onion can be white, can be yellow can be red, whichever you prefer to eat. It doesn't really, you know, matter too much. I, I mean, I myself prefer the Spanish onion, but if you can't find the Spanish onion, you can use any other. Uh, you use, and then you add in 10 cloves of garlic, fresh garlic. If you don't have fresh garlic, you can add the paste. The paste will work as well. You add one tablespoon of salt, preferably sea salt or pink Himalayan salt, and you then going to simmer this on the heat for 24 to 48 hours. You know, if you have like a, those of you that have a slow cooker, that's ideal for this, because you could just let it run for two days on electric, and my goodness, it'll make a really nice broth. And, and those of you who don't, you can use your, your cooker, you know, your stoves, and uh, you can, you know, just put it on low heat and let it simmer for... Uh, 24 to 48 hours, and after that, when the broth is made, you, know, you get a big jar, and you're going to put your, you know, you're going to extract the, the broth from your uh, mixture, and it's going to be a lot, of, it's going to be very oily. And this is rich in collagen, and collagen is the stuff that you hear about stars, you know, getting injected on. You know, they get collagen injections into their skin so they can look younger. Well, you're going to get this naturally out of this stuff. This is natural collagen. And what, what you're going to do, you're going to fill up your jars. You can, you can put it in your fridge and you're going to basically take two to three large teaspoons daily. So you must eat, eat those daily. And this stuff, you know, if you're going to make seven and a half liters and it's going to probably reduce down to a half, maybe to three and a half liters. And we can fill two, three jars with it and they should last you 10, 15 days.
then you can just remake it after 15 days. So two things that you must do. Number one, <coughs> excuse me, number one, you make this stuff. Once it's made, you store it and you, you drink it daily, two to three spoons. And you can do, you can do two spoons in the morning, uh, and you can do two spoons at night. Uh, and then you do chicken livers once a, uh, once a week. Uh, yeah. So one week you're going to have this collagen stuff and the next week you can add chicken livers. Or you can just add the chicken livers as one, one day a week into your diet plan. And if you can do these two things, I, it can be chicken livers. If you like beef liver, you can have that. I myself, I prefer chicken livers. You can have beef liver or lamb liver. Whatever is easier to get, you know, it's very easy to buy chicken livers these days. And if you, if you add this to your diet plan, it's going to do a, a number of things for you. Like I said, it's going to lower your blood pressure. It's going to make you look healthy. It's going to reduce your age by at least, you know, you're going to, you know, reduce your age by about 15, 20 years. You're going to look younger. You're going to have healthy bones. You're going to have a healthy skin. And overall, you're going to have longevity of your life, you know, long life as well. So, but you've got to make this a part of your plan. Also, this will help to reduce your weight somewhat as well because it controls your weight. It won't, you know, uh, allow your, your skin to sag. This is anti-wrinkle as well. It's almost like a tonic and it gives you immune support, health support, and uh, it gives you your skin, hair, your gut, your bones, your joints, really good collagen. And collagen is very important for our, our, our body, our bones. And this is naturally produced from the cow's bones. This is why you can understand that why, you know, God instructed us, that, you know, a lot of the times we were using cattle to make food. And even, you know, in the ancient times, sacrifices were made from cattle and uh, lambs, etc., but more cattle were used as well. So I highly, highly encourage you to, 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 to follow this plan. If you want to help your, yourself, your body, your health, and you, then you won't have to pop, you know, three dozen pills every day. That's, you know, by the by, you know, that's also, you're going to save a lot of money just purchasing those pills. This one stuff. The other stuff that you can do that I would definitely guide you to do every day, something that I do as well. Uh, and I also do the, uh, you know, the livers. I do that as well, religiously. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is, uh, is you get, uh, yeah, th those of you can afford it should add fish to your diet at least once a week. Uh, preferably salmon fish, preferably, uh, because it's got good oils in it. And if you can't afford salmon, if it's too expensive for you for some reason, then I would suggest you can get, uh, you know, good uh, fish oil capsules because they will help you. But make sure that they are uh, naturally, organically produced because, you know, a lot of these fish oils are very, very in, you know, inexpensive, cheap produced, and they don't have a great effect because they have add chemicals to them. So try to get those that are non-chemical if you, if you can. I think New Zealand is probably famous for making fish oil capsules that are, you know, non-chemical. So the other thing I was going to advise you apart from this is that I want you to get, get jaggery. Jaggery is, for those of you Indians and Pakistanis listeners, for those of you, we call that gur. It comes out of sugar cane. And sugar cane, as you know, is naturally produced over here in the east. And, uh, you know, you get exported it into the west. Uh, so I would suggest you get good jaggery. Don't get the Mexican type. That's just awful. <laughs> I've seen it in America. It's just terrible. It's really a dark brown color, and it doesn't have the same effect. Try to get the, the, the jaggery. That you can look at it eBay, and you can buy it from Amazon. Get the, the yellowish version of it. It'll look yellowish. And also you'll find that it'll break easily with your hands. You know, when you, when you have it, it's been in like lumps, and it'll break easily. And uh, so use that one as excellent, excellent for your health. It's a yellow food. It will, you know, it will really help your, uh, uh, one of your uh, chakras uh, down here in the stomach area. And uh, it will, it will definitely help your health. 
Uh, I know there's a doctor that produces this uh, uh, this particular uh, spray medicine that that I recommended to a couple people, and uh, it was you know somebody advised me about that, so I passed it on. And that spray is, by the way, produced out of jaggery. And they remove, they remove the, the sweetness and some other stuff, and they take one of the chemicals out, and they make a spray, and they sell it for $57. And they say that that spray is good for many, many diseases, skin diseases, other diseases. You know, there's a whole list of diseases that can help. However, my suggestion is this, that everybody's not going to be able to, uh, you know, able to pay $57 every month, you know, or every two weeks for a, for a bottle. So my suggestion is that uh, unless you really want to get that bottle, which I, which, which I spoke about, remember we spoke about this uh, bottle a few weeks back, the Nano formula. So rather than that one, my suggestion is this, that you get jaggery and you add it to your coffee or your tea every day, a small amount, and that will do two things. And let me tell you the, the, the <laughs> spiritual side of jaggery. Spiritual side of jaggery, it will increase your good luck. Okay? Probably never heard that before. So, yeah, it will increase your good luck. And it will benefit your body system generally. So, take it fresh. Take it whole. Try to get the Indian or the Pakistani version, which is yellow. Don't go for any other varieties, you know. Especially the Mexican, stay away from it. America doesn't have any of their own. So, forget about that side. Uh, England doesn't have any, forget about that side. Europe doesn't produce much of that. It, it's imported. Uh, I would, I would take it, I would only take it from two countries, either Pakistan or India. That's it. That's the only jaggery I will use. And, uh, you'll do great. You know, you, you, you'll find it's inexpensive. It's not a huge amount of expense. I would ask you to replace your sugar, your white sugar. Remove that from your diet completely and replace it with jaggery, if you can. And uh, you will benefit your health tremendously if you do that. I, I have found that I have done that. You know, I've never taken white sugar for the goodness last 20 years, maybe, maybe more. I've always used brown sugar, but I've moved on from brown sugar to jaggery. And I tell you, it's just excellent. It's really, really good for your health and it's just amazing, you know. I, I can't tell you, you know, I can't say how much it's amazing. It's just amazing for everything. So continue with that because the more you move away from chemical, chemical stops, the better for your body because our bodies, you know, try to break down the chemicals and sometimes our bodies struggle. But this is natural stuff. And uh, I'm learning a lot of stuff in the East, you know, going back to ancient sources, learning a lot of different stuff that is very, very helpful for health, and I think that we must use it. Okay, so that's great. So what I will do is I will give you another tip, cooking tip on uh, which oils to use next week. We'll discuss that as uh, health-wise, what is the best oil, and in regards to heat point and how you should use those. So with that, I'm going to end my lecture. And I'm going to hand it back to Rabbi Kiva. Have a great Shabbat and great week ahead. Tadam. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Shalom to you. Uh, Tadam Rabbah Kohim for a great instruction going forward in the days of our forefathers back in the East and, uh, yeah, this, you know, how many of you think you'd hear these, this kind of advice, you know, coming from your local preachers and evangelists and the, of God, you know, that's supposed to be assisting you, uh, I guess they're more, they're more, uh, I guess in tune with assisting you with the afterlife or the, you know, how to get to heaven method instead of what to do now and how to live your life now. And have heaven now, have heaven here on earth and benefit not only yourselves, but your families moving forward as, uh, there's a lot of conspiracy theory about this, that, the other, and the third. The latest conspiracy theory is about, you know, vaccines and what they have in them and blah, blah, blah. Don't get the vaccine. Get the vaccine and blah, 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 blah. So what do we need to do? We need to, uh, take care of ourselves and our bodies the natural way. I've always been a big fan of the holistic way. How many of you are the same way? 
Let Mother Earth take care of us. We have everything that we need on planet Earth to take care of us, to supply us and take care of us with all the necessaries that are needed. You don't have to go run to some pharmacy and let them mix this, that, and the other in the third up for you, and then before you know it, you know, how many of you are seeing this amongst people, you know, your family members, friends, and loved ones, that they, they have been diagnosed with some kind of particular ailment, and they're given a pill, one pill. And before you know it, you see that relative maybe three, four months, six months later, and now they own six pills, <laughs> seven pills. Because one pill will give you so, it'll, it'll deal with your little, it'll candy coat your little situation, but then it'll give you other, you know, give you side effects that are just crazy. So it's very, very important that we, you know, guide ourselves and with the guidance of the gate, uh, guide ourselves to uh, optimal health and taking care of ourselves the holistic way, the way Mother Earth intended for us to do. Shalom, Hashem, as he wakes up <laughs> the Brooklyn Shield and all his glory. So I think that's very, very important for us to understand going forward is that uh, we can heal ourselves. God is within us, so we have the ability to heal ourselves. You don't have to run to the doctor. I'm not knocking doctors. Your doctor out there, I'm not knocking you, but they've been taught uh, let's just say they've been taught a script, and that's just what it is. And unless they break that script, and Hako, he, he can probably, uh, he understands this. They, they've been taught a particular script, and all of them have been taught the same script. Now, the successful doctors are the ones that break the script, and they go more into tra traditional medicine. Like, I mean, you know, full disclosure, my wife is from China, I have a house in China, and you know, that's one of my bases, but, you know, Chinese medicine is like the best medicine out there. I'm seeing it, and a lot of Americans are starting to witness that very same thing, is that, you know, that, that Chinese medicine has been around for thousands and thousands of years. It's very, very, very effective and very, very helpful and uh, and, and very, very holistic at, at, at the root of it. So I think it's very, very important for us to understand. Uh, uh, Tara says... I remember my mom making oxtail stew. Oh, yeah. I tell you what, all you Jamaicans in the house, anybody with bacon, and you, you know, coming from the Caribbean, they love to eat some oxtail. And they have a, a good way of cooking it. But I tell you, yeah, the uh, the beef bone, the, that's kind of becoming a, a, a fad, a, a, a trend over here in America because a lot of people, you can go to, like, your Costco's over here, and you can find just the, the bone broth, but it's not going to be authentic uh, as authentic as you making it at home and yourself. How many of you have seen it in the stores? And like your Costco's and and maybe in your Sam's, you've seen like you can you can buy you can buy a jug of like just bone broth they call it, but it's not going to be as as you taking the recipe that was given to you by Hakohim and 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 beginning to apply your own little recipe to it, and you know maybe sticking your fingers in it yourself. And coming up with your own little, you know, tradition for your bone broth, however you want to do it with oxtail. I do mine, you know, we have uh, loads of beef here in Texas, so it's very easy for, for us to find uh, beef bones here. Oh, my goodness. My butcher has them up to, uh, uh, you know, he has a lot of them, and he's glad to give them to me. And he gives a lot of them to me with some meat on it as well, so we get a little bit of the meat in there as well. Uh, is with the with the bone broth, but my wife makes it all of the time, all of the time. That juggery is a must-have. Uh, Simha, I'm pretty sure you may have like a Pakistani uh, section in your in your neighborhood in your city. Uh, go go hit up one of them Pakistani stores. They'll they'll be able to tell it. They'll be able to get you the juggery for those of you who are who are on. Um, who are on uh, uh, Facebook or you're listening via YouTube, it's spelled J-A, I'm sorry, J-A-G-G-E-R-Y, and I tell you, uh, or it's called GUR, uh, G-U-R. Hit them with one of those names. They'll probably know exactly what you're talking about when you get into these kind of areas. Do you have, Sima, do you have a, a, a local, like, Indian store, Indian community, or a Pakistani community, oh, they'll, they'll be able to, they'll point you in the right direction, and you cannot go wrong. Cannot go wrong with these particular products. They're excellent, and I tell you, must-haves for your, your refrigerators. Okay, so 
Oh, uh, oh, ghoul, uh, or, <laughs> or is the, is the guttural emphasis on the U, or. So I, I think, uh, I think it's very, very important for us to, uh, to take heed to these things and, you know, learn from our brethren, our cousins, our brethren, and, and, and to itself and going back to the holistic type of way of doing things is truly beneficial for our bodies, which will truly be beneficial to us because, I mean, how can you be successful? How can you, you know, want all these things but not take care of your body? That's, you know, it, it's, it's all connected. We're all connected. Universes, this earth, the black holes, the galaxies, you know, we're all connected. We're interconnected. And so we all want to run at optimal proficiency, and I think that's very, very important. Never, nothing is too small. Because from the too small comes the great. And I heard that in an interview with Jeff Bezos after he went to space. How many of you seen him go up into, in his little, in his little ship? Remember I told you he's gonna go up. He did go up. He did not disappoint us. He went up with some family members and friends. And, uh, in his post interview, he said this. He said, you know what? He was talking to everybody before they took off. And he was like, you know, what we're doing here is epic. But this is just a small thing because I see a lot of big coming out of small. Said small things like this uh, are the start of big things, and, and, the, and he went back in reference to his starting the business of his of, of of Amazon. How many of you in this room use Amazon? Put up an A if you have used Amazon at some time in your life. At one time, that particular business was small. It was small. It was a fledgling little business, but look how big it is now. So don't. <laughs> and he says, uh, so much. <laughs> Hey, so much. So don't don't look at something as, as small as being in, in, insignificant because, yeah, I remember Oliver. They, they were just selling books, and I do remember that time. I was like, wow, they're selling books. I said, well, yeah, this is going to be good, so that way you don't have to go to the library anymore. You're just going to have to go out to these bookstores and purchase some books. And as you know, I firmly believe that Amazon actually put bookstores out of business. How many of you have local bookstores in your neighborhood? that are still in existence. A lot of them have gone out of business. There's still some of them around that have like a, a, a big business model to them that, you know, they're kind of like global, but the mom and pop bookstores, they're no longer around anymore. You don't see them. And, you know, you, you have a Jeff Bezos to thank for that and Amazon because he's made it more practical and more easy. You understand the business? Yeah. Barnes and Nobles are still around. Yeah, we have a Barnes and Nobles down the street here, but I noticed that a lot of the Barnes and Nobles have closed down. There used to be a lot of them, but now they they closed a lot of them down. There are only a few, and uh, they're not as populated anymore as well as I'm noticing. So, you know, some some of the big ones are still going to be around, just like you said with the Barnes and Nobles. But some of the other little mom and pop shops have been swallowed up by by what. By ease, efficiency, by what? Uh, accessibility. And that's what uh, Jeff Bezos brought to the table with Amazon. And now, and to doctor your responses, all of you are, 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 are partakers. You're witnesses and you're watchers of, of the product that started out small. Amazon started out so small. So before Jeff Bezos went up in space, he said, he said the same thing to the people. He's like, look. Don't see this thing as a small thing of what we're doing right now. This is a small thing that's going to develop into a big thing. And this is why I would encourage all of you, don't sleep on space exploration because that's the next big boom. I don't know how you want to intend it, however you see it, participate in it, it be uh, technology-wise or, 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 or creation-wise or, or investment-wise, but... Don't sleep on space exploration. Understand that we're here on this earth, but space is a ride away now, isn't it? And it's only going to improve and get better and better and better as competition gets out there, as countries get involved to want to, you know, you get the pride of countries involved here, you know. And, you know, you know, France is probably looking at this and like, hey, if Jeff Bezos and Americans can do it, we can do it better. We, we, boom, boom, you know. And then you get the Chinese saying the same thing, you know, like, hey, man, look, we're going to go in space and we're going to eat noodles while we're in space. And then you get the Indians, you know, from India. I mean, my goodness. So you're going to, and, and that's, to me, that, that's, that's healthy. 
competition. It's not about trying to one up another person, but it's it's all in the spirit of what of of uh, exploration, Hashem, creativity, and and what's uh, what's wrong with a little healthy competition? Right? I don't know what particular jobs or fields you guys you guys are in, but don't you want to be better than than your your coworker? How many of you don't want to be better? Don't want to excel and move to the top of whatever list that you have and create your own economy. You want to be the best. You don't want to be the least. That doesn't marry with our with our covenant agreements, right? You see, we're we're told we're going to be the head, not the tail. I'm not looking at nobody. You going if you're looking at me, you you looking at my tail because I'm you know, I'm not going to be looking at your tail, but for sure. I, I don't see things that way. You know, we're in our own universes. We we're in our own lands. How many of you within your own self realize that you know you can go to other lands without leaving without leaving your bedroom? And our Cohen has taught us this in a way. You you can take yourself to other places and stay in, and sit down in your lazy boy chair, Google Ship. And with technology today, you can view other countries. I know for a while while COVID was kicking off, there was a lot of businesses that cranked up that would give you virtual travel experiences. How many of you have heard that? Where and, and I think they're still around, but you can actually take a virtual trip without even leaving your living room. Without even leaving your bedroom. Isn't that amazing? Without now the experience is not going to be like it was if you were there, but you can say that you were there because you've seen it. And seeing is believing for a lot of people. They have to see it to believe it. And that's part of our nature. Do believe that. That that truly is a part of our nature. Is that for us to really believe in something, we have to see it. Atar says it makes me want to go see these places. Oh, indeed it does. And it gives you that fuel, that motivation to continue on and persist to meet whatever that goal is that you want to do. This is why visualization is so important. And this is why going to that car dealership and getting go test driving that car, go rent it for the weekend and drive it and see if you really like it. This is why that's so important. Because, because it solidifies, you know, that desire that you want, that you do want. You know what I mean? You want that you want to go and, and view the model home, to go and actually see the house for yourself, touch the brick, you know, kick the saw and say, yeah, this is what I want. I'm getting this. One of my real estate mentors, he'll, he'll drive up on a property and he said, I'm buying this property. He said, I got this feeling. He said, I got the eye. He likes to say, I got the eye. And he said, man, I look at this property and say, I'm buying that property. I'm buying that property. Now, he might not buy it in a week. He might not buy it in a month. He say sometimes he might not even buy it for years, but he's buying that property. See, that's the kind of mentality that we have to have. And he's a billionaire, but that's the kind of mentality, that that's the kind of mindset that we need to have with ourselves. That, you know, it's ours, and we need to claim it. We need to see it. We need to touch it. Like I said, we need to kick the tires. We need to get behind the wheel and drive it. Get a feel for the house. Go in there, open the door to the place, or look at the rooms. Go out in the backyard, in the back garden. You see, this is what needs to be done. Don't just, oh well, it's it's a small thing for me to go do this thing because it's still going to be the same. Well, if that's what you believed in, that's what it's going to be, and that brings me to the segue right into my lecture. How many, I, I, well, I kind of, <laughs> I got two titles I can go with, I can roll with. But my first one was, who believes in you? And then I thought, I thought about the who. Now, for some of you who have been around for a minute, like enthusiasts, how many of you have heard of the group called the who? Any of you ever listen to their music? I remember that was called the who. The who. It's kind of old school, so some of you may not know this if, you, if you're more new school. This is an old group, and they were called the who. But, but, but the question is, and my question is, who believes in you? Believe in you. Eddie says, they the song, Who Are You? I think, right? I, I don't know, because I you know Eddie's, I really, I just know there was a group called the who. I don't, I didn't listen to their music. But, but, but the question is, you know, who believes in you? Or, who believes who believes you or who believes you? 
You see, because believe it or not, that's an important question. Why do I say it's an important question? Because a lot of people waste a lot of energy on the belief of others in them. Believe it or not. And they'll do anything to make you believe in them. You see, you see, you see it on television. You see it with anybody that's trying to sell anything. One of the first things in sales that you must be able to do is attract the attention of somebody's belief. Correct me if I'm wrong. They, you gotta, they gotta believe in you before they get on your product, right, Chang Y'all? They gotta believe in you. So, I heard this from one of my mentors, and I think it's very important. How many of you in this room have a story? You, you must connect yourself and your personality with a story and other to connect to others. Some of you may in this room say, I have, I have a lot of stories, <laughs> and that's good. <laughs> you know, that's a good thing to have a lot of stories. Because just like I call, he said, he's a people person, and every person has a story, or if not stories, plural. That's a, you, you must have a story in order to interact and to connect so that begin to believe in you, have some kind of faith in you, have a connection to us, a relationship to you. Some of you may be saying, well, yeah, Rabbi Keith, I heard a lot of stories in my life, and they were all lies. So I don't, I'm not a, I'm a, I'm not a fan of stories. <laughs> but again, you know, you got to be able to tell a story. I remember, man, when I enlisted, in the armed services, in the army. I remember, I went to my recruiter, and man, recruiters are good at telling stories. How many of you know this? Either from movies, or you have first-hand per personal experience with this. They'll sit there and they tell you a story. Yeah. Oh, he said, man, you high on your ASVAB test. So this means that, you know, you can pick any job, any profession in the military if you want. And here, here, me, you know, I'm, 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 I'm clear-headed, man. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking logically here. I'm like, okay. Military, army, stuff I see on TV, full metal jacket. I watched all those movies. I'm like, hey, hey. I say, look, man, if I'm going to do this army thing, um, you're going to you're gonna have to guarantee me that I'm always in a job that has air conditioning. Now, this is a mindset of somebody that's born and raised, no, not born, but raised in Louisiana. Louisiana, Creole country down there. Humidity is, is hot as hell, and our state bird is the butterfly, is, is the mosquito. <laughs> so... So I'm sitting here, and I'm like, look, man, I'm going <laughs> to, I told him, Eddie, so I said, look, man, look, I want, I'll do a job. He said, you know, look, you got to pick a job. You took this test, now you got to pick this, you got to pick a job. I said, look, man, I, I, I want a job where I'm going to be under the air conditioning 24-7. I, I don't want to go out there and do all that work. I'm not in it. Yeah, to top of that, Mr. Bar, I like that old Ram, Rambo just on TV, but I don't want to go out there and play that. So if you can give me some AC. You guarantee me some AC? I said, look, man, um, I like to be around women. I love women. I said, you can give me a job where I'm always around women? Oh, Oliver, I'm laying it out. And he's sitting there listening. He's like, okay. And I, I, I can feel his energy. He's like, yeah. Like, he's got something for me. I was like, okay, we on the right track. Yeah, I'm joining the Army, right? And he's like, uh, yeah. I said, yeah, I love being around women, too. He said, man, do I have the job for you? He said, man, you want to become a nurse. He said, most of the, most of the, man, he, I mean, he, he painted this good story, too. Now, look, at the time, I'm going to college to be a civil engineer. And he's like, no, 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 man, you want to be a nurse, man, because, look, we're going to always keep you in the hospital. I mean, he's painting this picture. I'm, like, seeing this hospital scene, and I'm in my little scrubs, man, and I'm around all these beautiful nurses. I'm like, wow. I'm like, man, where do I sign? You see, so you got to be able to tell, I mean, he told his story good because he made he made me sign on the dotted line. He had me, man, itching to sign. And I'm like, oh, wow, man, this is this is what I want to do. He said, man, look, you don't have to worry about going to wars. He said, you go, you know, they, you, you just take care of them when they come back. Because, you know, they, they bring them in the hospital and you care for the soldiers. I'm like, man, this is right up my alley, man. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and be a nurse. But that's the story that was told. And that was my first taste of nursing in the military. But come to find out, the story was... He was partially false about the story. He didn't give me the full deal. Well, come to find out, stages to get into nursing is you have to start out as just a medic. You don't just jump into nursing. There's a, a scale. you got to work your way up, 
Remember Jeff Bezos, I told you in his interview, he said, you know, sometimes you got to start small. Well, it's the same thing. Sometimes you got to start small. And, Eddie, you would agree with this, right? I know a lot of my, my currency mentors, they'll say, man, one of the worst things that I did was I took a whole bunch of money and I put it into account and I blew all that money instead of starting small. He said, man, if I can go back, have you heard this story from any of your mentors, Eddie? He said, well, if I could go back, I would have just opened up small accounts until I developed the technique and then put a whole bunch into my account and then made more money than my 10X and triple X. But you've got to start. He said, man, he, my mentors will say, oh, one of the, one of the best things that one of the, one of the best advice I could give you traders out there is to start with small accounts. So if you blow a small account, it's not as bad as blowing. And, and, and this particular mentor, Started his trading uh, on the Forex currency trading with a $340,000 account, Paco E. That was his first time tasting trading. And it reminds me, my first time tasting, tasting the Forex was with Paco e. He was in the U.K. We were talking, I think, I don't know what it was, Skype or whatever. I don't know what it was we were on. But he was like, look, keep up. And he was showing me. This was like live. It was like, look, you can put this money in and then you can, you can, you can. It can make money. And I'm sitting there watching. He said, keep it at the same time. You can put this money, money, money in. I think he was trading like one lot. I don't know what I could. I could have was trading like one lot. I was like, wow. He made this money quick, but it also you can lose that money just as quick. So this particular mentor, a $340,000 account, he put all his savings, his wife's money, he had put it all in. He's like, man, I'm going to put all this money in and I'm going to I'm gonna uh, 10X it. And my wife is going to be so happy. Well, guess what? He ended up losing that whole account. He blew that whole account. He blew that whole account. Trading the Forex. Why? It's because he didn't know what he was doing. But he put all this money in. See, this is, this is a great lesson that you can learn here. You see, you got to know what you're doing. And you got to be mentored and taught what you're doing. So you got to start small. So you can lessen the blow when it does happen, when you lose. Because guess what? In this life, oh, and like the, what, the way he... He beat the coin. He's a man I lost a lot. But no, what he really did was that he gained a lot of experience. He learned some great lessons. He learned a big lesson behind that uh, uh, three hundred and, 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 and $50,000 uh, uh, account, right? He learned some big lessons behind that. He said that he lost. Now he's one of the, man, he's a great trader now. You know, 20 years later. He's a, and his wife still loves him. And his wife, I mean, he said, man, we were on the borderline of divorce. And I heard this one other mentor say this. I thought it was pretty cool. He was like, I heard this from somebody. He's like, you know, people say money can't make you happy. He said, but a lot of people want to go through that experience. <laughs> it, it, money can't make you happy. But a lot of people want to try to go through that experience for themselves. And that's so true. So. Behind this, you know, yeah, this man lost a lot of money. He lost their whole life savings. And so he ended up borrowing a lot of money, taking a – he piled on to it, but his wife never left him. He said they were, his wife was close. He was getting, about to get a divorce. Behind what? Behind him blowing money, not being responsible, not doing the right things. And you know what he said? He said because he tried to do it all by himself. He, wanted, he said, man, I'm not – I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to trade this way. And I'm not deviating. And how many of you understand? How many of you are that same Hebrew from when you first opened your eyes and you awoke to who you really do that same Hebrew today? I submit to you not. You all have what? You have evolved. And you all have changed with the times. I, am I correct? I mean, when you look at the Hebrews that came out of Egypt, it's the same thing. There had to be an evolution. You have to evolve. You know, going on this for 40 years, there has to be some evolution. You won't stick around, right? Or you'll fall by the wayside. And that happened, didn't it? There has to be an evolution. You have to take small steps. And believe me, the Hebrews coming out of Egypt took a lot of steps. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> believe me. Yeah, their shoes may have never worn out, but I guarantee you, they took them steps by themselves. Each and every individual had to take those steps. One step at a time, right? How do you get from point A to point B? One step at a time. So thinking small is a great thing. Starting small, 
That don't mean you can't think big, but start small. And where you find success, then keep replicating. We talked about that in previous lectures, to just rinse and repeat it, right? It's one of the keys, Mishpaha. So the thing we have to look at is this, is, is the who. Is the who who believes in you. I talk about this Forex mentor, uh, $350,000 down the toilet, flush down the toilet. And this, this, this happened quick because he was trading big, Eddie. I call him, he was trading one lot and he could, I mean, with a $350 account, $350,000 account, he could, but again, with no knowledge behind it. What a big lesson, right? Who believes in you? I can guarantee you. His mentor said it himself. He's like, man, there's a lot of times I didn't believe in myself. He said, I quit believing in myself. Then he realized, I need help. I need to change. I need to change my system. I need to follow somebody else's system that's actually working and that's actually producing results. Who wants to do something and not have results? This is why I ran away from religion. I kept doing the same old things with no results. I was expecting results, but I wasn't getting any. How many of you in that boat? At that boat at one time, because you're no longer in that boat. You guys are riding in, in, in luxury cruise ships and luxury lot yeah, yachts. Now you're not new. You're no longer in that boat anymore. But you have you have lessons in that, right? I'm like, wow, man. Why am I gonna continue to do the same old thing and I'm not getting anywhere? They keep making all these promises, but nothing ever comes because you're believing in the wrong stuff. You believe the first step. Who believes? Who believes? And, and again, who believes in you? Somebody, somebody answered that real quick. When I said, who believes you? Or who do you believe in? Somebody said, I think it was a talk. She said, myself. Ow. That's somebody with some insider information. Because that's the first step. Is that you have to believe in yourself. And until you can believe in yourself, you cannot believe. Not, all these other beliefs will just be shallow, shallow belief. Unless you begin to believe in yourself. But others will make you think that you have to believe in other things. You have to believe in everything they're telling you on TV. You have to believe in Jesus. Why do you have to believe in Jesus? Why? Well, what's the proof in the pudding in believing in Jesus? Christians will tell you, oh, you got to believe in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? They'll come up to you. That's how they'll open up the conversation. Are you a believer, brother? I don't know if you're hearing that in Pakistan, I call you. But they'll come to you, hey, brother, are you a believer? Oh, go to green. We're using go to green. And the Christian come up to you, hey, are you a believer? A believer in what, man? Are you a believer in Jesus? Do you believe? <laughs> I call you, no, no, not here. Are you a believer? Yeah, I wouldn't suspect that from a, a Muslim country, right? <laughs> I wouldn't suspect that from a Muslim country. Are you a believer? In, are you a believer, brother? Or, hey, let's flip it, Akoin. Do they sit there and ask you, do you believe in Allah? Do you believe in his, his last prophet? Do they sit there they don't even ask you that? Wow, that's great. You know why? Is because you know why they do that? You do Hakohin because look, they go in Hakohin, believe it on him because they're not saying, "Well, before I get instruction from you, let me go through my checklist to see if you qualify." They believe on Hakohin for the things that he has done. This is a very important part of this lecture that we need to understand of this parsha. Is belief is is. I wrote this down. Let me write, let me read it the way I wrote it down. The doing will attract to your belief system. What Hakoin has done and what everybody have heard about what he's done has attracted, his doings has attracted people's belief. So now they come with Hakoin believing that he's going to work for them too as well. Do you see what I'm talking about? And if you look and you analyze the whole situation with our history and us coming out of Egypt as Hebrews and ending up uh, uh, over the Jordan and crossing the Jordan as Israelites. 
That is the whole formula in a nuts there. Not in a nutshell. One of my forex mentors says this, and this is a great saying. He's a Mexican. He's a he's a mil, he's he close to a billionaire, but he's a millionaire right now, living in Florida, living a life. And he says this. He says success is not a fantasy. Success is a formula. I'm gonna say that again. How many of you just that just gave you goosebumps? How many of you that 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 that, that make the dreadlocks on your on your head stand up? Let me say it one more time. Success is not a fantasy. Success is a formula. How many of you agree with that affirmation? Success is not a fantasy. Success is a formula. That made this Mexican a billionaire. His belief on that affirmation that success is not a fantasy. It's a formula. What kind of formula are you going to use to be successful? What are you going to use? The first step is you got to be able to believe in yourself. Who cares? And it goes back to my question. Who believes in you? Who cares who believes in you? Well, if I do that, then people are not going to like me and blah, blah, blah. They think I'm crazy if I start telling them that I'm, I'm, uh, I have this house that I don't have right now. And it's over there, but I don't have it right now. So what what they think? Who give two hoops? But yet people do. People are what other about what other people think about than what they think about themselves. Shame. You know what I mean? And that that's the big stumbling block. Why? It's because they can't get off the ground with being successful, with doing whatever they want to do, with having that perfect health, with having that relationship, with, a, with having perfect peace and perfect love and joy that they desire. They can't meet their desires because they're too busy trying to meet other people's beliefs in them and how they want them to believe. Well, what is that? And what a waste of a life and a waste of energy that way. You know, listen, Miss Bob, people are living and dying every day, right? People are living and dying every day. What are you doing in that between time? Living and dying. That's that's a given. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's in that between time. And this is why I'm so fortunate and so happy and humble to be connected to going in the gate underneath his umbrella. Because he has opened up a whole new world to me. You know what I'm talking about. A whole new world, just like that cartoon, man. It's real. Aladdin. That stuff is real. How many of you seen Aladdin? Put up an A. You can take Aladdin and just and wave that little, that little lamp, <laughs> and he can give you whatever you want. But guess what? It's not just limited to three wishes. Rukashev. It's a whole new world. You guys need to go see Aladdin. There's a there's a lot of learning in some Aladdin. You go watch that movie. You'll learn something. you learn something. you learn something about loyalty. you learn something about dreaming and having dreams. And I mean, this man, this little boy Aladdin, man, he had, I mean, he had dreams and aspirations. And he wanted to do things. And he was a part of things. And it happened. He didn't know would, but it happened. Maybe probably not how he thought it was by, by rubbing a genie's lamp, but it did. Then he realized, even after, after have a, I ain't going to tell you the rest of the story. You guys you need to go watch the movies. It's just a great movie. Cartoon. Great little cartoon. That'll really give you give you uh, faith in yourself. Belief in yourself. You can have and be and do and want anything in you. How it's going to happen? Like our coin says, who gives to who's how? It's the who that's important. Who do you listen to? Who do you believe in? Who believes in you? Who gives to who's? Who believes in you? Doesn't matter as long as you believe in yourself. Because listen, everybody else, listen, you don't think our forefathers... As Moses is given a, a history lesson before he passes on in the in the next life to the to the Hebrews, he said, "Look, man, uh, how many of these Hebrews that came out?" And since it says that you know, roundabout figures, uh, six hundred thousand men that came out. 
How many of you at that time, how many of you think, how many of you believe that uh, all of these people believed in the God of Israel at that time? Now I'm pretty sure a lot of them just came along for what they saw happen with the smackdown that happened in Egypt. But how many of them really sincerely believed in the God of Israel? Think about that for a minute. How many of them just tagging along? This is why the journey for the 40 years is so important. To weed out the tag alongers and see who, who is really at the end faithful and loyal. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that's, that's important to understand. You see? Or, or, like, or like it's told here in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 4. But you that did remain trustworthy to Yahweh your power are alive, every one of you this day. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, not y'all. But that you that did remain trustworthy to Yahweh your power. It's the importance of going and wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Do you trust yourself? <laughs> Some of you can't get, uh, get make heads or tails of nothing because you don't even trust yourself. You gotta trust yourself. Be faithful to yourself. Got to what? Believe in yourself. You got to know that you know that you know. And nobody can change that. Nobody can tell you, oh well, nobody can talk you out of it. With their little shiny words. Oh. Yeah, with the, how are you gonna do it? Look at all your family members. Oh. You ain't never coming out of China. Oh, well. Oh, wow. Who's laughing now? I look forward to going back to China. Not to rub it into the eyes of all those people who said my wife would never come out of China. But just to show them that they can come out of China. And go back and come out and go back and come out and go back. China's a beautiful country. I love China. I love the people. I love the food. I love the history there. A lot of, a lot of great history there. For Christianity. Don't limit yourselves. Don't, you know, maybe you can, maybe you have to start small, but you don't have to think small. Think big. Aladdin did. He thought big. Well, while at the same time, everybody on the street that knew Aladdin was calling him the common, he was just a thief. They would call him a thief. Oh, you're a thief. You're a thief. You're a thief. Did Aladdin think he was a thief? Hell no. But that's what people would say about him. Oh, you're, you're a thief street rat. They call him a street rat. How many of you been called a street rat lately? <laughs> street rat, street rat, street rat. But yet Aladdin had bigger dreams. He had bigger desires. He didn't see himself as no street rat. Some of you today may be called hood rat, not street rat. I hear that term a lot. Oh, you just, these are just, just hood rats. No, those are women, man. And respect them. They women. They women, they're women, just like your mama is. You gonna call your mama a hood rat? I submit to you not. So then don't call these women hood rats. They're women. Respect them. Some folks just don't know no better, Miss Baha. So we have to assist them sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? We we have to infuse them with some positivity and 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 some and some proper syntax. So they can build a relationship the right way. The, 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 the movement of Yah's people from Egypt all the way to the land full of milk and honey, the God of Israel was building their belief system. Because a lot of them, I guarantee you, didn't believe on the God of Israel. They just believed in the doings. You see, that's what's important. They saw what the God of Israel did. So who cares? Who believes in you? Do you believe in yourself? The Hebrews saw what God, what the God of Israel did, and did they believe? Let me ask you that question. The Hebrews, they saw what the God of Israel did with Pharaoh, put the smack down on Pharaoh, the super, 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 super power at that time. They saw that. They saw that with their own eyes. They saw the Sea of Reeds. They saw all of these great things, part 12 different ways, and they walked on dry land. They saw that. Many things that they saw that Moses is explaining to them over that what happened. Yet, 
how many people believed. Did they, did they really believe? Think about that. And we see from history that they did not because they still kept doing the wrongs to where all the wrongs, all the disbelief kept them out of the land flowing with milk and honey. The majority of them, and I'm being conservative when I say majority, the majority of them didn't see the land flowing with milk and honey. You see what I'm saying, Ms. Ma? Belief system. And see, this is why a lot of people don't, they really don't believe in anything. Because, number one, they don't begin to, you know, as students of nature, we got to realize is that people don't even believe in themselves. How many of you know somebody around you in your nation that don't believe? You can tell. You look at them, and, man, you can tell. they Just by their doing it, but they don't believe in themselves. How many of you know people like that? You know, there's people, and they just don't believe in themselves. They don't believe. They'll believe in everybody, what everybody else says about them. They'll believe what the news media says is true, or they'll believe it. And you're right. That's why, you know, President Trump, he came up with that term, fake news. Because the people believe, they begin to believe this stuff. And before you know it, they pair it in that same stuff. But they, people don't even believe in their own self. The doing will attract your belief. The doing will attract to your belief system. This is why you all are connected here. And I would submit to say to you, would you submit to say that we're a small group just that comes to this room? But I know our queen has students all over the world and never see a Facebook. Never see. Never come to the room Facebook. Never come to the room for YouTube. But they're his student. But why submit to you say, you know, we're a small group. Right? No. We're, 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 we're a small group. But just like Moses said, and, and, and just like we're told in our Torah, Deuteronomy 4 or 4, but you that did remain trustworthy to Yahweh your power, every one of you this day, you're alive. How many of you in this room, you, you, that you can affirm that, that you're alive? You're not just walking zombie stuff that's, you know, they're, they're, they're living, but they're not alive. You are alive. Why? Because you connected to your, your subconscious. You connected to self, and you love self, and you believe in self. When nobody else believes in you. You believe in self. Isn't that something? The Hebrews saw what the God of Israel did. Yet, did they believe? Wow. So it's got to be more than just what, what you do, right? I mean, if you, you know, it's got to come from within. Just because people do good things doesn't mean that you're going to believe them. I know people that are skeptical. You, you want to do a good deed, right? Say like you see this man, you're going into Walmart, and you see this man sitting outside, and it's hot as hell. It's like I go and talked about. It's like it's pushing 100 degrees in the shade. And you see this man, and you're going into Walmart, and, you know, you just got this, you, you got this urge to just want to go give this man a $20 bill. You go up to you, this man, and you give him a $20 bill. He said, wait. You, 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 re, you extend your arm out and you're ready to give me $20 bill. You say, wait a minute, why are you giving me this $20 bill? What do I have to do to get a $20 bill? Why are you just all of a sudden giving me money? Do you do you see people like that that, that are just skeptical? Even when you, you're you trying to do a good deed. But there's a lot of a lot of folks out here that are missing a lot of great blessings because they, they're real skeptical of even what's good coming their way. They're skeptical of it. They, they're skeptical of the good that's coming their way is going to turn out bad because Oh, there's a catch to it. I didn't read the fine print and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. They just can't see things on the surface. And say, hey, man, what a great deed. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It sure is hot. I'm going to buy me a, a six-pack of my favorite beverage, and I'm going to be happy. I really appreciate it. Thank you for... Putting out that Thank you for putting out that positive energy. No, there's some people that are just skeptical in life. Every little thing you come their way. Well, we have to do this. Why do we have to do this? Well, it's not going to turn out good for me anyway. Well, well I'm not going to do it anyway. I mean, I, I, I don't have any chance of being self. I tried and tried and tried and tried, and it doesn't work out. Start thinking small. You got people that think small. Or they, they, think, they think minuscule. Or they think negative. So you can't get beyond the road for the trees. And that's just what happened. 
If we would just begin to understand, which all of you do, you all know the mighty power that we serve. You begin to ask some questions. Just like Moses began to ask the, the Hebrews questions in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23. And I besought Yahweh at that time, saying, look at verse 24. Oh, Adonai, Yahweh, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. For the ale, the power, for what ale? Here we go. For what ale is there in Shemaim or in earth that can do according to your works and according to your strength? My goodness. What God did we serve? The God of Israel. What power that we have. That power is still with us today. We still have that same power, if you believe. Listen, if you can't believe in yourself, do you think you're going to believe in the power that's within you? You can't, you can't do that. You see, because then you're, you're polar opposites. You, you can't do that. You can't do that. I'm shown. You must believe in yourself. You must believe in self to see the power revealed that's within you. You have the power. Like that song, I got the power. You got the power. You got to believe it. But you got to believe in yourself first. Remember what we said. Your doing will attract to your belief system. However... What you do is what you're going to believe in. If you're doing nothing, then guess what your belief is? Your belief is nothing. What are you doing? And that belief system could be positive or it could be negative. It goes both ways. And this is what we see in humanity with a lot of people. A lot of people. They just don't believe in themselves at all. But we can't concern ourselves with how they believe. We must concern ourselves with how we believe. We believe in ourselves. When you believe there's nothing to stop you, it can't stop you. So-called disability can't stop you. Uh, money can't stop you. Lack of. Because a lot of people think, oh, well, I don't have money. I can't do anything. That's, see, you, you, put, you, you, you have that lack mindset. Lack of beauty. Lack of handsomeness. Nothing that can stop you. Any of you notice when you deal with relations, you could, and, and I guess this is like a personal thing, but to me, you can, and, and, and it's all relative, right? Because beauty is relative, and handsomeness is definitely rel it's relative, right? But you could see, like, some of the most beautiful women in the world with some of these dudes to where you begin to think, oh, lady, you could have done better than that. Anybody ever seen it? Anybody ever even thought about that or something? You look at these couples, you're like, wow. How are these, right? You'd be like, wow. You're a beautiful woman. How the heck did you get with that? <laughs> what the heck you do? It looks like you just pulled him out of the track. That, that is a witness and testament to it's not about how you look on the outside. Because these women, and it goes vice versa, but these women saw something from these men on the inside of them that was beauty, beautiful, that was just so attractive, and they fell in love with that. You begin to think, I'm like, how the heck does that happen? But yeah, I see. I see now. I see now. Because it's not, what a great lesson, right? Because it's not just about what's on the outside. How many of you have been hoodwinked and bamboozled by what was on the outside, and you realize that what was on the inside was demonic? <laughs> yeah, I've been there, done that. What was on the outside? Man, it looked just like uh, peaches and cream, peaches and herb, peaches and all that. And you're like, wow. This is the one on the outside. But then you get on the inside and you're like, hell no, I got to go. This is just not what I want. This is not what I desire for myself. And what a lesson I learned going forward. So now you know, okay, this is why we highly recommend that you spend, you bed down your particular mate that you want to get with. You actually spend some time with them under the same roof. So you begin to really see. And, and understand the character of the individual and what's on the inside. Rabbi Zakari says, the uh, and out of you fade away. Yes, it would. But you will all be beautiful on the inside. But I tell you what, you eat this beef broth like my wife cook it. This beef bone broth, oh my goodness, that out of beauty ain't going to fade. 
it's gonna get better. It's gonna you gonna age like a fuck some time, baby. I tell you that stuff does work. I'm beginning to understand the secrets to to the Asian. You know, whoa, skin looks so good. Well, this is one of those insider secrets right there. It's from that's come from the east, baby. This is what they do. Bone, like, honey, honey, honey. The beef bone. So I mean, get with it. Oxtail bone, however you want to do it. But that is a a, a, a great a, a key right there to it. So you know you have to look at these factors, Mishbaha. You have to look at these factors and ask yourself. You know we serve a mighty power, mighty indeed. He's powerful. He's done. I mean, doing. Do we even need to go there? Not only what what he does for the Hebrews, but look what he's done for us as we have opened up and really embraced the God of Israel and accepted the terms. Rukashin. Rukashin. Deuteronomy 4 and 4. But you that did remain trustworthy to Yahweh your power are alive, every one of you, this day. And that is so true. Moses goes on to talk to him about, you know, how you're going to be in the land and then you're going to be outside of the land again. But again, how many of you all understand that? We've been taught this by Akoi, but you must understand this. Just because we're not in the land, that doesn't mean we don't have to still have the mentality and war mentality of being in the land. Because wherever we are, we in the land. If you in France, you in the land. If you in New Zealand, you in the land. If you down there in the land down under, you in Australia, you in the land. We have to have that same mentality. We're going to produce and multiply in the land. We're going to be successful. And as all of you know, when you begin to use your minds like you can use them, your land is infinite. You can take and go to places that many people don't even imagine. That's so true. It's so true. Not John, find your shalom, son. It's so true. So you can begin to do that. You can begin to find that peace that people can't, that people don't even begin to understand. They can't, it's beyond understanding. You can find that love, joy, and happiness everybody's looking for. But you have it. You know why? Because you know why they're still looking for it? Rabbi Zakari, because they're looking for love in all the wrong places. they looking, and that, that's so true, that in all the places, all the, they look outside of themselves, out where, but within. You gotta make, you gotta internalize humanity. Quit pointing the finger about everybody else around you and Democrat and Republican and blah, 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 and what this person did, what that person did. And ask yourself, well, what am I doing? Because my doings is going to attract my belief system. Well, what am I doing? Moses laid out for the, the Hebrews, okay, this is what you need to do when you enter the land. But, okay, and then you're going to get you're going to get scattered because you're going to get kicked out of the land. I'm just giving a brief synopsis. Look at Deuteronomy 427. 427. And Yahweh shall scatter you among all the nations. And you shall be left in fewer number among the heathen. Where Yahweh shall lead you. Okay? That's real, isn't it? <laughs> that's for Israel, isn't it? And that's so true. So, yeah. We were going to be... First and scattered to the four corners. So, so, so this is what we we have to understand. Now, does that does that change our mentality? Okay, okay. So now we have to act a certain way outside of the land. Now, God, find your shalom. So we must act, we must act a certain way outside of the land. No, it doesn't. That means we do even better. That means we do even better. You come, Papa. You come, Papa. Yeah, you talk to the family. Yeah. You sit down. Mama. So we must do even better, Rukashan. We must do even better in the nations. This is the blessing of the exile, the dispersion, us being scattered to the four corners. Not for us to throw a pity pack, feel sorry for ourselves, and, and tell tell every family member, "Oh man, we sinners. That's why we got kicked out." Why? Well, what's the, what's, what, what good is it focusing on that? Well, we're told that we're light to the nations, right, Nakshan? We're light to the nations. 
We're not the light with the dimmers on it either. You know, in your house, you got the little dimmer. You can dim the light. No, we got it up full speed. This is, we're kicking it up a few notches. We're lights to these nations. Do great and marvelous things. Still to multiply, still to produce, still to do all the things that we need to do, right? And do them even better, right? Like Atara says, shine like a diamond, Ruka Shin. Diamond. Yes, to shine like a diamond, right, not John? So this is what's important to understand. But you can't do that on yourself. You can't do that worrying about what other people believe it in you and how you are. That doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Well, they believe I'm never going to make it. Well, guess what? I don't give a flying fluke what they believe. Oh, they believe I'm, I'm because I'm starting so small. Jeff Bezos started small. Look where he is today. Start small, think big. He was saying this before he took off to go into space. He was like, look, we started small, but this is going to be bigger. Wow. You see where his thought process is? This is why it's good for you to listen to these. It's great to listen to these successful people because they just affirming what we already affirmed is that this is the way to success. And it don't just have to be about the money. But, you know, like it, like, like, like it, like it said, you know, everybody says money, uh, 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 money can't make you happy, but everybody want to, every, but everybody wants to try it for themselves and experience it for themselves. So we need to understand this going forward is that, you know, it, it's not a, it, the, the who, who is what really matters, the who that's inside of you. Who are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to you? Or are you going to listen to whatever? Or are you going to be to you? But you have to have that relationship with, with the inside of you, with yourself. You going to listen to yourself? I like listening to myself. I like talking to myself. I like hearing myself, too. I really like doing that. I have a lot of great conversations. But that that's important, that you, you, you build up yourself. You know, for, for for so many years, ourselves have been torn down or neglected at best, or just like forgot about. Why? It's because we, we, we've been trying to uphold a persona, the persona of Christianity, Catholicism for me, Christianity for me, uh, non-denominational. Re- I've been trying to hold up this persona. And I was like, man, this stuff is stale. This is not who I am. I'm, I'm trying to hold this up for what? What is it doing for me at the end of the day? Right now, John? Nothing. I'm not getting nothing out of it. There is more to life than this, and it definitely is. For you listening via uh, Facebook or you listening on YouTube, there is definitely more to life than you running behind a religion. What do you want for yourself, and how are you going to get it? What do I need to do to get on that, that road map? What, what, what system do I need to follow? Because I understand Success is not a fantasy. It's a formula. What formula am I going to follow? Am I going to follow the perfect law? Am I going to follow Dante's law? Am I, what am I going to follow? Am I going to follow law and order? What am I going to follow? What system am I going to use? What system am I going to believe in to make me successful? A successful husband? A successful wife? A successful father? A successful businessman, a successful human being. And I guarantee you, everybody on the face of this planet wants to be. How are they deem success? Working at Starbucks or CEO of your own business? You create your economy. How many of you understand that there's people happy flipping burgers at McDonald's? That makes them happy. And that's a start for them. Remember, they started small. I told you about my military thing. Man, I thought I was going to be a nurse. They said, no, no, no. We're going to kick you down to the beginning level. you got to become a medic, and we're going to ship your butt to to Desert Storm. You're going to war, sir. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> this is not what my recruiter told me. I didn't get the full story from the recruiter, right? Boy, he, he, man, he told a great story, though. But eventually I saw what he said. I mean... I did taste what he talked about. 
except I did work in a hospital with AC, but get this, I worked four years on a burn ward where the temperatures were outrageous because the people didn't have any skin on them. So we were in this room, gowned up and gloved up, and the rooms were over 100 degrees just to keep them at 98.6 degrees body temperature. Can you believe that? I was like, I was like that. I said, man, if I could find my recruiter today, but you know what? That was great experience for me. I gained, I gained great, great, great experience because I'm doing things that nurses cannot license in the civilian world. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it was a great experience for me. A great lessons learned there. But I'm like, what the hell? But I did get what I want. I was in a hospital. I was working around some of the most beautiful nurses you ever want to see in your life. And... You know, I'm not going to war playing Rambo. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, in a way, uh, you know, if I ever see my recruiter again, I'll shake his hand. But, hey, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate your service and the service that I was able to give for my country. And I appreciate what Uncle Sam gave back to me as well. So, it's a, it's a, it's a two sides to, to me. But you have to be able to tell a story. Know your story. You all have a story. If I give the mic to each one of you, you should be able to tell your story, at least one of them. Because you have stories. Tell them. Stories are going to connect you and make you personable, make you real. And then let the individual know, oh man, this, 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 this person's connected with themselves. They know who they are. You know what I mean? They're going to want to, they want to do business with you. They want to have a relationship with you. Right? What do you do when you date, Ms. Baha? All of you dated. Don't you don't you tell Oliver? Did you tell your wife stories? You told her some stories. She told you some stories, and then you guys say, "Wow, you know, we have some kind of love connection here, right?" There's a love connection involved here. But it started out by telling stories, right? You told your story. Here's my story. Here's where I am. Here's where I want to be. I believe you and me, we can get there together. You know, we can help each other. We complement each other, right, Nachon? Nachon said, "Blah blah blah blah." Okay, that's very good, Nachon. We complement each other. You see? Bravo. Life is all about stories, Mishpaha. We all have wonderful stories. What are we reading from today? Our, the history, our story of our ancestors, Ruch Hashem, that's propelling us forward. Because we believe in ourselves and we know who we are. Who cares if they look at us and say, Ha, you're not a Jew. I give a flying fruit what you put. <laughs> How many of you heard that lately? Oh, you, you're not Jew qualified. Matter of fact, I haven't even heard that lately, by the way. But, I, you know, they go about it in a in a nonchalant kind of way now. He's like, okay, yeah, whatever, man. Whatever, dude. <laughs> Don't even care anymore. But they do look at my doings. They're like, wow, how can you do these things? Because I serve most of them. We have a contract. We have a relationship that's going to last forever. Hello, not by it, right, not y'all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a relationship that's gonna last forever. So I, I don't, I, I don't care what other people think. Who cares? Who cares if they think I'm qualified? I know I'm overly qualified, Rabbi Zakaria. They understand to tell me, oh, you don't qualify? Yeah, because I'm overly qualified. You see? You don't, you don't, don't go with the common thought of of of, of man's ideology, because it'll fail you every time. It'll weaken you. You love yourself, you're strong within yourself. And no no, no, no person can change that. Unless you want them to change it. Unless you give them the keys to your castle. And I know not many people giving up the keys to their castles, right? It'd be like I call you saying, okay, look, uh, I'm going to go out here and get the keys to my house to, to some random stranger say, here, here's the keys to my house and and go do whatever. You know what I mean? That's just ridiculous. You don't do that. For the sake of yourself and the sake of your family, you wouldn't do that. Right, now, John? It doesn't happen. So we need to consider these things going forward. The who? <laughs> we need to consider. The who? Who you going to believe in? Who you going to listen to? Too many people focus on, well, how is it going to get done? No, develop the formula and then do it. Right, not John? And follow through with your formula. For your success, to prepare you to meet whatever desire you desire for yourself. Develop the formula. Make relationships and don't break relationships. That's the last thing I'll tell you this day, Mr. Hall. Is make relationships. Don't break them. Because you never know 
when you're going to need to come back around to that relationship for assistance, for guidance, for whatever. Or they may come to you for help. So you may never know. So make relationships. Make sound and, and, and solid relationships. And connect to people who have the same thought process as you. Who have the, who has the same drive and desire that you have. Who may have the desire that you want. Be great assisters and helping you get whatever you want. Believe it or not, it's all about relationships. You know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Who do you know? Not the how, the who. Who do you know? Who do you know? That's going to help you a lot. Uh, on that note, we'll wrap it up for this Shabbat. I'll say Shabbat Shalom and Shalom Shalom to all of you. Not Sean. Say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom and Shalom Shalom to all of you, Mr. If not Sean, maybe he wants to go down for a nap. I don't know. Papa had to put him down. Book a sham for a little nap. So I give thanks to the God of Israel for you always as I hold my blessing, my miracle right here, my manifestation right here. He's got a sister that's coming soon. I will be giving you that information soon. It's in the works. Little baby sister on the way. Book a sham. It's coming. It's coming. And don't call me a liar. I'm just calling it out. That's I'm... I'm I'm, I'm calling it out. I'm bringing it into existence. Rugashin. Rugashin. Uh, Rabbi Kiva needs a... Right? Rashad, you want your sister coming? Uh, yeah, he says yes. Okay, good. So, on that note, we'll wrap it up with this. We'll say Shabbat Shalom and Shalom Shalom to all of you. I have a great six days of labor ahead. And, and go out and be greatness. Because you are greatness. So, be greatness. Uh, yet enough for that, uh, Rabbi Kifa. Okay, we'll, we'll call it a day. We'll close and, uh, we'll meet next week and, uh, we'll take it from there. Tada. Thank you for coming. Shabbat shalom, shalom, shalom to you.